I've been doing loops lately, these pre-made loops. I've been doing some that have kind of um, short progressions and then some that have longer progressions. I'm doing it as an exercise to try to be a more efficient producer. It's kind of like I've heard this saying where, you know, when you're trying to learn how to cook, to try to just cook it the way the recipe says. And then once you've mastered that or gotten really good at that, then start adding your own ingredients and playing around with the with the uh, recipe. So I guess what I'm doing now is trying to get better at learning the recipe of loops and beat making. I mean, I kind of got it already, but there's always more to learn, I guess. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Earlier today, I may already made a loop. For some reason, I want to start with a, a vocal sample to kind of set the mood. Let's pop in that sample. So I'm kind of just jumping in to the leftovers plugins that were from the last one. And I kind of been using the similar plugins because really this one structure, <clears throat> I only use this one, you know, for bringing in samples. So it can always stay up here. So I'm going to jump into my folder of all sorts of fun stuff here. I just, you know, collect stuff. All right. I actually found something, not what I was looking for. My philosophy on making loops is this is going to be one of many, many loops I make. So I'm not going to get too caught up on making it perfect or whatever. There's times and situations for that. And I don't feel this is one of them. This is going to be just, you know, a loop that I make and maybe I don't even use. So why am I going to spend too much time? I'm almost 40 and I'm just now realizing, hey, man, you're still taking too much time sometimes. So that's why I say that. I entered the sample into my MIDI. <laughs> I'm gonna try to figure out the tempo using. You could use just your uh, metronome thing and play around to the tick sound right. But if I kind of already have an idea, I use this app called Tap Tempo. Uh, if you can see that there, and um, if I know the beat I want, kind of the tempo, I just tap it in here and it tells me, and I put it in my DAW. So I know I want to do like a, and it's working it out, and it told me it stopped on 14, so 115. If you're kind of inspired by a, sp a specific song already or and um, you love the, f the groove of it and the feel, just whatever the song is, Google that, get the tempo and pop that in there and start too. 115. Hopefully the sample lands in there. Put this in the right spot. loop it a couple times. I've actually got notes. This has been like an exercise for me. I have a whole binder of all this different steps. I don't know how to show you on here. I mean, there ain't nothing much to see, but I was really trying to break down like the anatomy of making beats, how I want to have layers and stuff, which I'll, you'll see here and uh, how they repeat and stuff. And just again, trying to master the recipe. But I have a folder where I keep all sorts of tips for mixing, like frequencies of mixing even to the point where when I'm releasing beats step by step, and this is all, again, all about being efficient. You know, a lot of us beat makers were one man shows or one man companies, at least in the very beginning, which is where I'm at. This may seem structured and boring to the average person, but this structure allows me to have fun. I want to do these, I do these kind of type of structured things here to where I can keep my creative part of my brain engaged and really get into that flow that everybody that makes music knows what I'm talking about. What this progression is, it's going to be eight bars. And the second layer is going to be where the higher melody comes in. Well, I haven't made the melody yet, so let's do that first. So what I always have here in the first track, this mono track is just the piano. Let's just leave, because there is a little bit of a melody I like in the sample already. Let me turn this off. So what I do now, if I made the melody, I kind of make it a little muffled at first, like a muffled version. So 
So now I hear that. Reminds me of some, uh, some old Dre. I like to put a little bit of sound in the, in the bottom, in the background, just to give, fill in some space. This is Pulsar. This is a fun plugin with a lot of good ambient stuff. Kind of more on the digital side sounding, more electronic, but you might be able to, sometimes there's cool little beds that just fill in the background. Kind of put more body to this, to the, to the loop. Okay. That could work. Am I hearing like a ghost high note that's not there? Or I don't know if I'm tripping out or what. So it's actually, yeah, it's a conflict of the actual note and the sample is what I'm hearing. Once I, it's all I did was add that subtle bed in the background and it completely changed what I heard. So I could either choose to scratch the bed go with what I thought I heard originally, or try to use, just go with the bed now in the sample, which is what I think I'm gonna do now that I've soloed those two together. I it put my vision in a different direction. So I think what I'll do is add some horns here. I love horns, I love brass. Make this an accompany melody. Like that. fan of that sound so much so let's find what I like I want to do something so I want to open up the sample this is something I did before in another beat and I really liked it an effect that I found this is it yeah the Abbey Road studio I don't remember which one, but it was so cool. I should have wrote it down or something. So we'll just play around till we find it. That's not bad. If I can just get it to calm down a little bit. I don't want so much on it. I might have to bounce it to track and then chop it a little bit because the, the tail is a little bit extreme, but I like the way it sounds other than the tail. So I don't really don't want to mess with any settings, especially since I don't really know how to control them that good, honestly. So this is one way to get around that. Commit this, and now it's an audio track that I can now shape up a little bit better. Right about there, I don't want all that. Yeah, we have some preset plug-in um, sends for delay and reverb, so I'll go to Haas Delay, which is already there. And this is something I do to widen things. Send it to Haas. Don't want to go all the way stereo, so I go like around 60. Bring that up. Bring this over to 60 as well, and this creates a stereo effect out of a mono track. Hmm, okay. Okay, too many trumpet stabs. So that's pretty good. I can take these parts, chop them up, use them however I want. So I'm just compressing it, trying to glue it up together. I'm gonna do the stereo trick on this one too. Add some reverb, smooth it out. There we go. Still got some lower tone <clears throat> of some kind slipping through. High pass on there. Really thinning out the sound. That's more like it. 
We'll try something here. Just curious. Hmm. Let me see something real quick. better so it was getting a little probably because I listened to that same sample a billion times just now it felt like easily became repetitive so now I switch it to this now the one that is processed trails off so the original thing I didn't want which is the trail ended up being what I liked in the end as goes making music now we have a lead that came out of the little bell tone thing so i'm going to make this a little bit bigger or a little bit more put it in a bigger space okay cool just left a little bit of it blank at the end in case i wanted to do something like that in the song and drop it out all good i'm just looking at this meter to make sure everything's kind of landing in the same spot because I will be bringing it down as a whole when I make a beat. So just making sure there isn't too many peaks in, in there. And the sample can be the loudest peak, I guess. Which it looks like it is. And that's it. I'll go ahead and bounce this down, put it to the library of loops that I've created. Um, and if you like these types of videos, if you like tutorial videos showing you tips, techniques. Um, also, uh, if you're curious about beats, hearing beats that I make, purchasing beats that I make, or anything at all Miles Media related, go to milesmedia.com.